Think of the difference of when you open up your inbox and see an email that's just a generic marketing email newsletter versus something that is super tailored to your interests. Maybe it knows your name or maybe it knows some of the things that you like. Obviously this is going to feel like a much more personal tailored experience as a subscriber and it's probably going to make you more likely to open that email and actually engage with whatever is inside it. So in this video I'm going to show you how to create more engaging tailored emails using personalization tools inside Flowdesk. And if you don't know, Flowdesk is the email marketing software that I use, love and recommend to everyone I work with. I have a comparison video between Flowdesk and MailChimp here and you can get 50% off your first year of Flowdesk if you sign up with my affiliate link. That will be in the description of this video if you want to check that out. So the first and most commonly used and known feature is probably going to be name personalization. So the first thing you'll want to do is head over to the forms section on Flowdesk and you'll just want to make sure that the sign up form that you're using actually does collect names. Um, it is actually possible to just collect email addresses and sometimes if you've used a template that is only collecting email addresses, you'll just want to come in here, click on where it says the email address and just make sure that you have first name added as a field here. If you don't see it, just click add and then it will give you an option of any fields that aren't currently being collected. Once you know that your email list is definitely collecting first names of people, you can come in to create an email in here. I've just added a text block and if you would like to add someone's name to their email, all you need to do is just type the at symbol and then it will give you the option to select their first name. Now, obviously everyone's first names are going to be different. So what this is going to do is pull information from the subscriber where they've entered their first name and it's going to display that person's first name. But also you'll see here that Flowdesk is prompting you to pop in another word just in case someone's name isn't available, in case someone has signed up with just their email address and they didn't put in their name. So for example, if my sentence is starting with hey and then let's say that the first name is Anna, um, instead of displaying Anna, you might want to use the word there. So then this text will become hey there or hey friend if that person doesn't have a name available for Flowdesk to use. So just click to apply and then you can fill in the rest of your sentence. So what that's going to do is when this email actually sends out, this gray box here will swap to the person's name. So instead of uh, hey first name or there, it will say, hey Anna, let's plan your Cornwall itinerary. Hey Simon, let's plan your Cornwall itinerary. Or as I say, if the name isn't available, it will say, hey there, let's plan your Cornwall itinerary. So you can add in people's names as a personalization into the text blocks within your email and you can also go and do it in the subject line as well. So here's where you can edit the subject line and again, you can just type that at symbol, choose first name. Um, and if you don't have the first name available, enter in your word. So just from a psychology point of view, when we see our names written down or hear our names being said, it does kind of alert us and make us want to read what's next rather than just if this email subject line said, this was made for you. That's just not going to be as engaging as seeing my name saying, Anna, this was made for you. I would also point out here that I wouldn't recommend doing this with every single email you send because it can feel a bit overdone if you do it too much. So just use it sporadically as a nice way of personalizing your emails. Next, let's talk about how splitting your email list up into different segments can help you to tailor your email marketing more. So you'll see when you go into the audience section and click on segments, you have the ability to create these almost different lists within your email list. And you can use these in a variety of different ways. You could segment your list by their interests. You could segment their lists from where you've got those subscribers from. So like an export or a general subscribers list. And what you'll also want to do is if you offer any kind of opt-in freebie or lead magnet on your website to encourage people to sign up to your email list is you'll want to create a separate segment for each of those freebies because then you'll have specific segments of people on your email list where you know exactly which freebie they signed up for and so that's going to give you a better idea of what other content they might be interested in. So for example I have a segment here for people who have signed up to receive my festival packing list freebie. Now, because they've signed up for that, that would say to me that they are interested in content to do with festivals or maybe packing lists. But when you're creating the emails, you can then choose which segments you want to send them to. So you don't just have to choose all of your subscribers and send out a blanket email. You could create a specific email based on festival content and send it specifically to that festival packing list 
freebie segment because you know that they're probably going to be interested in this. You can also exclude segments as well from your emails, which is another way to tailor it and make sure that you're not sending emails to people who aren't going to be interested in that content. So for example, let's say that I was sending an email where the main goal of the email is to encourage people to buy my rainy day ebook. Now I could choose to send this to all my subscribers, but what that would do is also send that email to people who have already maybe purchased that ebook and that's just not creating a very tailored experience so what i can do is come in here and actually choose to exclude anyone who is in my rainy day ebook segment and that means that those people won't receive that promotion so it's also a good idea to create segments based on customers and people who have purchased from you you can either upload your customer lists manually to these segments or you can use automations to add your customers automatically to this segment and keep it up to date I do show you how to set up automations and some more advanced features in Flowdesk in my email marketing with Flowdesk course, which also goes through lots of strategy to do with email marketing as well. So I'll leave the link to this course below in the video description if you're interested in checking that out. You can also get your email subscribers to choose their own preferences and segment themselves on your list so that you can send out these tailored emails. So to set this up, you first want to choose what segments you want people to be able to add themselves to or what preferences you plan on basing your future emails on. So for example, the topics of my upcoming emails are usually likely to either be about Cornwall, about travel, or about my product promotions. So what I can do is set up segments for each of those types of emails and then allow my subscribers to choose which one they're actually interested in. So someone who is just interested in Cornwall content isn't gonna get generic travel content and someone who is just interested in my products isn't going to get any of that travel or Cornwall content. So I'm just gonna go ahead and set those segments up. You can call them whatever you like. I've kept them all in the same color so that I know what they're kind of relating to in terms of preferences or interests. Then what you'll want to do is click into edit your sign up form, click anywhere on the page um, and you'll want to toggle on preferences on the right hand side and it will then add this section here where people can choose their interests. Obviously you can click on this text and completely change what it says, you can change the font to fit in with the styling. And then if you click on each of these checkboxes, you're obviously going to want to edit these and map them to the segments that you've just created. So that if someone selects this first checkbox, then that's going to add them to the segment that you want. So let's first of all change the text to the options and then we'll map them to the segments. Okay, so I've changed the text and now if I click on each of these, I can just choose which segment I want each of these to be related to from this drop down. And obviously, again, you can click on each of these and change the font so that it matches the style of your form and then just click next. And that will save your form and update it if you have it installed anywhere on your website or you can go and then embed it onto your website. And then all you need to do is when you are sending out an email, you can just go to add segments and just choose the segment that is related to the content that you're actually putting out in the email. If it's related to multiple segments, you can add more than one segment here as well. So maybe it's um, an email you're sending out that's just about Cornwall and travel content. So you can add both of those segments. And finally, a lesser known way of using personalization in your emails is to try out custom fields. So this is my favorite personalization option because you can get really creative with it. What you want to do is go into your form and where it says first name and email address, just click on that. And you'll see that if you click on the add button, it gives you the option to add a custom field. So if you're setting this up for the first time, you're going to end up creating a brand new custom field. And this will add this to every single subscriber on your list. And it basically allows you to collect more information about a person than just their name and their email address, which you can then use inside emails that you send out later on. So for example, maybe I want to collect information about where my subscribers are based. So I'm going to create a field on my form here that ask someone where are you based and then they're going to type in their location. I haven't got this set up yet so when I select the drop down I'm going to need to choose create a new field and I'm just going to call it location and click enter and then that has created a new field. It will have created a new field on all of my subscribers data and I would recommend selecting it as a required field otherwise people will just skip it and it's not going to be as useful. So once you've created that custom field if you go and click into any of your subscribers you should be able to go into segments and data scroll down and see that new field set up. This is also another place where you can create new ones as well, but it should be applied to every single subscriber. And obviously if they have signed up via that form that you set up and they filled in their location, then this will be filled in. So let's say 
Cornwall. That saved it. Obviously something to note is everyone's is going to be different, but that's where the fun and the creativity comes in. So now when you're writing up your emails, you can actually use these custom fields right within the text of the email. So instead of where I was using the first name, I'm just gonna go back here and I'm gonna type that at symbol again, and you'll notice that the field has come up here. So now I can select location, Again, we need a fallback word, it just in case someone's location hasn't been filled in. So if they haven't written Cornwall or London or whatever in here, I'm just gonna say your hometown. And you'll see how that's relevant in a minute and click insert. So now this field has been added. I'm gonna just type some text around it so you can see how this might work. Okay, so now this is gonna be a really attention grabbing headline in an email because it's using that personalization. Instead of this gray box, what's going to appear is whatever that person typed in into that box. So if someone typed in London, that is now going to say from London to the most beautiful beaches in the UK. Or if someone typed in as where they are based as Manchester, it's now gonna say from Manchester to the most beautiful beaches in the UK, all automatically. If someone hasn't got their location filled in, it's going to read from your hometown to the most be beautiful beaches in the UK. And as a subscriber reading that, that's just gonna make you feel like it's really personal. This email has been tailored to you and so you're more likely to engage with it. Other ways you could use this is instead of asking for where someone is based, you could ask what their company name is called. For example, if you're an accountant trying to sell your services in an email, collecting someone's business name might be a really great way of personalizing it to them, saying something like, has Byrosanna Limited filed their company accounts yet? Rather than just saying, have you filed your company accounts yet? It's just gonna feel like that whole email is written for you. Or maybe if you run a pet business selling pet products online or running a doggy daycare, for example, you would want to collect the person's pet's name so that you can personalize the emails to be specific for their pet. You could write an email that has text in it that says, have you thought about buying a new harness for Pepper lately? And again, it just feels like that email is then written for you. So you can see all of the different ways that you can use this creatively. And that's why it is my favorite personalization feature to try. Remember, if you want to give Flowdesk a try, you can get a 30 day free trial and 50% off your first year if you sign up using my link in the description. Thanks so much for watching and I'll be back again soon with another video.